Now we are going to start with our project setup. Here inside my drive, I will be creating one folder. I will give the folder name as Mern e-commerce. I will open this folder. Right click and open with code. Let me increase the size. Here inside this, I will be creating one folder. I will give the folder name as backend. Then again, I will be creating another folder. I will give frontend. First, we will be working on backend. Once the entire thing is completed, then we are going to move to frontend. Now inside this root, I will open terminal. I am inside the root folder. First, we are going to initialize our package.json file. I will write npm init hyphen y. Hit enter. By default, I will be having all the information. I will open this package.json and inside this, I will have this default information. Next, again, I will open terminal. Inside this root itself, I am just going to install some packages. Now here, I will install two packages. I will write npm i, i stands for install. I will write express and then I want to install .env. I will hit enter. Now packages are installed. To check, open package.json and inside this dependencies, we are having these two packages. And this express is nothing but it is minimal and flexible web framework for Node.js. And using this, we can easily build server-side applications. And using express, we can easily handle different routing. We can use middleware and it is widely used for creating APIs and web applications. Then we have installed this .env and using this package, we can easily manage environment variables. And what this package will be doing, it will be reading .env file in a project and then whatever variables we have created, it is just going to process that variables. So inside this .env file, we can keep sensitive data like API keys, Razor Pay if we integrate, we will have API keys, we will have secret key. So all that sensitive information we can store inside this .env and using this .env package, we can easily manage those variables. Now inside this backend folder, I will be creating app.js and server.js. Inside this app.js, I am just going to require express. I will write here const express is equal to require. Inside this, I will be passing express package. Now below this, I am just going to invoke express. And this entire value, I am just going to assign to the variable app. Now this app object is going to represent our express application. Now easily we can use this app for defining the routes as well as for defining middleware. Below this, I'm just going to export app. I will write module.exports is equal to app. Okay, here I'm using common JS module system. So I have used required and in this way, I have exported my app. Only when we export, we can easily use this app in other files. But in this project, I do not want to use the common JS module system. So what I will do, I will open this package for JSON. And inside this, here below this description, I will be adding type. And inside this, I am just going to give module. Once we give this entry, Instead of using common JS module system, we can use ESM, that is ECMAScript module system. Now, instead of using this required, what we can do, we can write import express from express. 
I will remove this entire thing. Now I will be using this pattern semicolon. This entire thing remains same. But now instead of exporting in this way, I will write export default app. I have done default export of my app and I will be using ESM module system. I will come to server.js and here I am just going to import app. Import app from app.js. And one thing you should carefully remember when we use common JS module system, even if you don't write .js, the file will be running. But if we are using ESM module pattern, then you should be using this .js extension. If you do not use, then you will be having error. I will write here log. And inside this, simply let me display app. Now directly, I will not run this file. Instead, I will open terminal. Here, I will install this node one. Because whatever changes we are doing in this application, again, we do not want to restart this. So using this node one, once we do some changes, it will watch for that changes and it is going to restart our application. Now I will open package.json and inside this we are having this node one. And inside this script, I will just separate by comma. Here I will be writing start. Here I will be passing this command node one. And here I am just going to give path of my server file. My server.js is present inside backend. So I will be giving this complete command. Now I will open terminal. I will be writing npm run start. Okay, start is the script name. Hit enter. Now everything is working fine. And inside this app, we are having this complete properties. Okay, using this, we are getting the object. I will remove this entire thing. Now inside this backend folder, I will be creating one folder config. And inside this, I will create the file config.env. And here, I will be creating environmental variable. I will give the value 8000. Now I will come to server.js. Inside this, I am just going to listen for this port. For that, inside this app, we are having this listen property. And here inside this, we will be passing two arguments. First is the port. Directly, I will be writing 8000. Second is our callback function. And optionally, we can just log this message. I will write server is running on port. Server is running on port 8000. Save it. Open terminal. Come here. Now you can see as soon as I save, I am having this message server is running on port 8000 because we are using Node 1. So as soon as we change something, our application is going to restart. But here I have already created this environmental variable. Now, in place of the static values, I will be using environmental variable. To access that, we will write process.env.variable. Now same thing, I will copy. In place of this, I am just going to paste. I will save. I will open terminal. Now you can see I am having server is running on port undefined. It is not able to access that variable. Why? Because we are using the variable but we are not requiring that package. Here I will be writing import dot env from dot env package. Now as soon as we save, you can see what happened. Again, I will be having the same result. Even after accessing the package, I am having the same result undefined. Why? Because we are not telling in which file we have defined this port. So here we will write dot env dot config. Inside this, we will be passing object. 
and here inside this object we will pass the property path and then here we are going to specify path of our config.env here i will write backend folder inside that we are having config folder inside config we are having config.env now save it now you can see i am having the result server is running on port 8000 but maybe sometime you will be facing the issues and you will not be able to access the variable so what we will do below this we will be creating one variable i will give the variable name as port and for this we will assign this entire value and if you are not able to load this port then by default we will assign 3000 only for safer side if it is not working we are assigning 3000 now in place of this we will pass our port variable and here also i will remove this entire thing i will pass port now if i open terminal again my server is running on 8000 but here if i have not required this save now my server will be running on 3000 but as soon as i require this i will be having 8000 now successfully we have completed with our project setup from next one by one we will be starting with every backend functionality and we will be working on creating apis